what are the advantages and disadvantages of vortex tube cabinet coolers compared to other methods of cooling electrical cabinets? One is cost effectiveness. Typically they'll be in a price range of uh, about thousand pounds or so, and they'll be way, way cheaper than the alternatives. So they're often two, three, four times the lower price than alternatives, and sometimes even more. Number two, they're easy to retrofit. There's no power source other than the compressed air. They're typically small, less than sort of 30 centimeters in length. They don't take up much space. So if you need to install extra cooling into a cab that's overheating, and they're far simpler and easier to retrofit than chillers or fans are. Advantage number three, reliability. There's no moving parts, no power source. So as long as the compressed air is flowing to the vortex tube, it will work as specified. Even in very tough environments, as a dusty or greasy, the simplicity of the vortex tube gives them enhanced reliability and there's almost no pain in it at all. But that is caveated on having a reliable compressed air supply. If the compressed air supply is flaky, then the vortex tube is going to be flaky as well. And the final advantage is they produce a positive pressure in the cabinet. If a slight positive pressure is produced by the vortex tube, the cab will be at slightly higher pressure than the atmosphere due to the action of the vortex tube, and this can actually help keep dust out. So in dusty, dirty environments, having that cab at a slightly positive pressure will help keep it dust free. So that's another distinct advantage. There. Well, the first one is they produce hot air as well, so they don't actually add or take away any energy from the air. So all of the cool air put into the cabinet is balanced by hot air coming out the other side of it. So we've got to be careful of that hot end. It can get to well over 100 degrees. And so that could potentially present a hazard. So thought needs to be given to where we're going to position them and how we're going to exhaust that hot air. It can of course be piped away if necessary. So it's not a particularly difficult problem to overcome, but we just need to think about that. The second disadvantage is energy efficiency. So they run on compressed air and compressed air can be expensive. When you compare it directly to chillers and air conditioning units, it'll cost more per watt of cooling than a traditional chiller or aircon unit. However, if we're talking about overall carbon footprint in terms of energy efficiency, if we're thinking about it in a green way, the vortex tube might win. This is because the manufacturing carbon footprint of it will be a lot lower. They're quite simple, small devices, and they're not using any refrigerants or anything like that, which can also have an environmental impact. So whilst they're less energy efficient, if you're thinking about it in terms of environmental impact, they might actually be better for the environment than chiller and aircon units.